When I'm not making games, I'm making websites. And one thing that is always floating around the web dev community is new browsers. And when they say new browser, they usually mean just a wrapper with a web kit inside. And, you know, it's not really a new browser. It's just a new set of settings you can change and how tabs are distributed. But what I wanted to explore is how it would be like to create a new browser from scratch. So I'm going to do a little experiment and see what we can create with Godot. So we have an empty project here. Let's start with user interface, which is our favorite node. And now let's start with a script, which is going to be, as always, the main script for this program. And now one of the nodes we want to use for getting signals from a server or sending you know, requests, things like that to get a website is the node HTTP request. So this is going to handle all the communication between our Godout program and the website server. Now that we have our HTTP request, I'm going to add a node which is going to display some information in the screen. Um, and for this, I could use just a, a rich text label. Since at the end of the day, all websites are just a text document that your browser reads and interprets in a certain way. So this is going to be our one. Okay. And yeah, this should be enough to start. Let's go ahead now and start with the code. So we want the program to first send a signal to a server telling them, I want to see this website. To do that, we use the HTTP request node, HTTP request node, and the request function. Here, if you press Ctrl and click on any of these, you get the documentation. And here in the request, you have all the information you need for it. Um, I don't want to go too deep into how a website works. But if you're interested, there's plenty of resources. I will link some in the description. Let's do for an example, the Godot website. So HTTPS equals Godot engine.org. Okay, so we're gonna ask, okay, I want to see the Godot website. Now, to know when this request is ready, we can use the signal from the HTTP request. There's a signal which is request completed. So this is the signal we're going to use to know the page is loaded and we can add that information to our program. Let's link it to the control node and it will give us these four arguments. The one that we're interested in right now is the body, which is the one that you usually see on your browser. You know, the other ones, you need to take them into account, especially, for instance, most of you might know this one, but if you get a response code of 404, means that the page is not found. If you get the 501, is maybe like you don't have access to the website. So we're going to ignore this by now. We can build different responses, like, you know, the, the jumping dinosaur in Chrome or funny stuff like that. You can handle all that depending on what uh, response you get from this request. But for now, we're just going to get the body of the website. And I'm going to add it to the rich label the, as a text. So let's see, I select the rich text label and I set the text equals to the body of these requests. Okay, let's try it out. Since this function is added on the ready, it's gonna run whenever you run the program. So if I test it out, let's see. I never save the scene, okay, main. I'm getting an error. The error it means that instead of a pull byte array, I need to set a string to this. So to do that, I can transform this uh, response that we got from the server from a pull byte array to string by doing get string 
from UTF-8, which is how the text is being encoded. And right now it should work as expected. Yeah, and we see it here. So technically, we already have a web browser, kind of. We're getting the information from the website. We can see it as text. And, you know, we have all the HTML and the content of the website. So now the next step would be to add a browse bar so we can try to open different websites and then going element by element and adding a style to it. So for instance, this H2 is a title. We would want to select all this part and display it as a bigger thing instead of just the text there. And that's what the web browsers do. They get all this text and they display you a website with style. Let's add navbar and start navigating some other websites. We go back to our view here add container box container horizontal box container this is going to host the input line edit this is going to be the website we are in and let's add a button paste button button it's going to be the go okay let's add some space for it by adding margin at the top so that way we don't miss any of the content. Let's say like 42. Now let's make this full width, top wide. We know that the size of this, we wanted it to be 42 because that's the room we made. Okay, 41, it's okay, should be fine. And since the box container is bigger than what the elements have, let's add some special properties to the line edit. Here in size flag, horizontal, let's set it to expand. This will occupy all the space it can inside the container. So we have now the browser bar. So this list line edit will have the default, which is the page that we are loading right now. Oh, HTTPS go.engine.org and let's see how it looks okay looks fine okay we can scroll the website we have here it is okay now let's make it work first i'm going to connect the button to the control so this is when you press the go this will have to trigger a function like this one so HTTP request, request, and we're going to get the current text that we have on the line edit here. So, horizontal container, line edit, is this node, that text. So, we get the text we have there. So, when we press it, it will trigger this function and it will update the body. Let's try it out. Let's open wikipedia.org. Let's see. Wikipedia. Okay, let's go. Nice, we get the Wikipedia page. <laughs> it looks terrible. It's impossible to read like this. But we have, we have the browser bar and the text here. So, on the next episode, I'm going to get the relevant information, like for instance, getting the title of the page and things like that and add it to the title of the window. And maybe even I will try to make the links work because if we go back to Godot Engine and we want to go, I don't know, to a different page. Let's see if we have here a link. Let's look for a link here. We have a link here. Um, here, href equals to another browser, another like a path. I want to be able to click on links and open them in the web browser. And yeah, so you can see making a browser from scratch is a huge task, but as with anything else, you can do it with Godot. You just need to go step by step. Thank you to my new patrons, Tyler and Peyton.
thanks to you that all this is possible so thank you so 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 much for being there and if you want to know anything in particular just let me know and i will make sure to answer you okay bye